Last week from the Evening Standard, I read an interesting article. The article asked the question, are you facing discrimination at work? From sexual harassment to being taunted because of race or religion. Discrimination takes many forms, so it's important to know your rights. There are laws to protect you from discrimination. The only problem is that many victims do not know how to stand up for their rights. If you keep quiet for the fear of consequences, as many do, it can impact on your career and have a detrimental and everlasting effect on your mental health. So you should know that the law will protect you if you speak out, even if you find yourself victimized as a result. You could also receive significant damages for the inquiry to your feelings and compensation for loss of earnings if, for example, the mental anguish caused by discrimination means you cannot work or you, you, or you are dismissed as a result. So know your rights. The first thing to understand is the scope of the law. There are a wide range of protected characteristics under the Equalities Act 2010, such as age, disability, marriage, civil partnership, religion, belief of no religion, gender, sexual orientation, pregnancy, and maternity. Seek guidance from your HR department. Then there are four areas of conduct of unlawful activity that the law protects you from. These include harassment, which covers unwanted conduct that has the purpose or effect of creating hostile or intimidating environment. The obvious news recently with the case of unwanted sexual advances, for example, this would be intimidating. However, the law is broader than this. The term purpose or effect means not just what was intended, but how the receiver perceived the conduct. Name calling, which is dismissed as banter, could be classed as harassment if the victim did not feel it was a joke, but found it deeply hurtful. The other conduct that you are protected from is victimization. If you make a complaint or raise a concern about discrimination, then you are protected from being victimized as a result. This can cover being dismissed, having responsibilities withdrawn or being demoted, anything that is detrimental to you. Then there is direct discrimination, where, for example, as a woman, you find male colleagues receive higher bonuses. Very clear, this is discrimination. Even so, it can be tricky to prove that the person involved was motivated by discrimination on the grounds of age, race, gender, disability, or another protected characteristic. Employers may not even be aware that the women on their team are less likely to receive a bonus or those from ethnic minority are less likely to be promoted. So seek advice on how to build your case. Finally, for indirect discrimination, this is a group of people who share protected characteristics, disadvantage such as shift pattern change, for example, which indirectly discriminates against mothers with caring responsibilities and cannot be justified would be discriminatory. Companies with a good reason will be known as objective justification. Taking a stand. Once you suspect you are being discriminated against, collect evidence in a logbook of names, witnesses, details to make a complaint. You'll be in a strong position to negotiate. So it is important to note there is no cap on the financial awards that can be made by tribunals, unlike in unfair or constructive dismissal cases. However, be wary of making secret, illicit recordings, as these might form the basis of a disciplinary action or dismissal procedure, or undermine the value of your claim if you come to litigate. Asking copy documents that you are not entitled to see or take could disadvantage your claim. Instead, keep detailed notes, send an email to yourself detailing an event or action and how it made you feel. Keep a record of witnesses of who saw what and when. The next step is to approach your employer. However, it is a good idea firstly to have a chat with an employment lawyer to ensure you do not disadvantage yourself and work out your plan. Every workplace is different, so you would also need to consider how your employer will react. You may find it less confrontational to have a quiet chat with your line manager or boss 
first and see if this can be resolved. Seek help from your HR department and if you have joined a trade union, speak to your union representative. An employment lawyer can also be on hand to talk you through the best approach. Always think about how your email or letter will be viewed by a lawyer or tribunal judge. So avoid mudslinging or hearsay. Simply make it clear that you believe you are victimized, discriminated against, harassed, and those behaviors in question. And this is unacceptable, causing you distress. Finally, consider what you want to achieve. There are a range of options open to you in negotiating a resolution, for example, an apology, a reprimand for those involved, a move to a new department, a good reference, and of course, financial settlement if you decide this is the course of action you want to pursue. Many employers will want to resolve disputes quickly and if they do not, remember, the law is on your side. You do not have to suffer in silence from harassment, victimization and inequality.